dear twin flame souls out there welcome to the twin flame awakening journey podcast and today is an episode 89 in today's episode i'm going to walk you through of the things that twin flame journey is going to teach you and show you apart from the physical love and there are many aspects on this journey that is going to happen with you and I would like to guide you through because again we sometimes over romanticize twin flame journey and I'm not saying here that you cannot be with your twin flame this is not what I'm saying what I'm saying is that this journey and this phenomenon that happened to you is not an accident it is somehow a blessing and it's somehow helping you to get closer of who you are we all have heard that from everywhere or internet or reading it or feeling it or seeing it that your twin flame is your mirror that is going to show you something of who you are and when the mirror is activated and triggering you the answers you are seeking for is inside and that's why when we first come to this journey we focus a lot on them we are focusing when they're going to reach out to us what they're gonna do how they're gonna do what who they are why am i feeling this way from towards this person and all of that which is very very normal as all of a sudden we were feeling something so divine and something so profound that our mind couldn't understand what just happened and this is the first thing that we are going to teach or learn here is an uncon unconditional love and unconditional love is our essence and it's our true essence of who we really are and when we meet our twin flame we feel this unconditional divine love and that's why it's so confusing because sometimes your twin can be a person that you have no interest in you are not connected in one way or another but when you are on this moment and space and time you feel something so divine and something so profound that you've never felt before even though you've been in love before even though you have been dating before you had relationships before you've been married or you are married and then this person comes to your life and you feel something so divine that your mind cannot understand and here is the same thing that when this happens to us we start seeking for the information like why i cannot get this person out of my head what is happening to me who is this person and then we start receiving information perhaps like twin flames or twin souls or you be guided somehow into the information and or you will meet the person who will tell you yeah you are on a twin flame you have met your twin flame and you're hearing this word and you're like what is a twin flame what, what is this thing Funny enough is that why I talk a lot about going inwards, why my workshops are designed beginning of this year and my retreats and everything are designed to go inwards. We, because we have all these answers. And I know when you're listening to my podcast sometimes and you have this click moments inside of you where you feel like I knew this. I feel this. This is exactly what happened to me. Because it's from our mind that we are trying to solve this. We are trying to solve and understand and make sense of this journey. Which is very, very normal. But our soul already knows. And when we quiet the mind and we connect with our soul, we have all the answers. Today's podcast episode at the end, I will put you a one meditation to do and it will be up on Patreon, those who want to do it longer. But I will put for a 10 minute meditation at the end of this, so you would know that there is a meditation at the end. 
to go inwards, to feel something that is there and that's knowing. Because remember, your soul has so much information. Your soul gathers information through the universe. And you are the universe. We are made of out of energy and atoms that are part of the universe. So we are receiving the information from there. And that's why when we start coming across with a twin flame information, and we start feeling it, we start feeling that this is exactly what is happening to me. And I know this. I already know this. Even me, let's say, right now when you're listening to my podcast, even when she says these words, I already knew them. I just didn't know how to trust it. My mind was not able to trust it. And the mind is an ego. Ego is the one that needs to have a proof, needs to have a uh, uh, explanation. That's why our, why our science is a little bit befi- behind. Because we constantly need to prove. We constantly need to show this on paper. We constantly need to have these informations there. But isn't that funny that when the time goes on, and more information is becoming available, we can say, I knew it all the time. I just knew it, that there's something way beyond. And so like a number one thing you're going to learn on this journey is unconditional love. Now this can make you to question like, I always want to say that when we're going to learn about the unconditional love, We're going to learn the fact that it's not how the love is going to return to us. Love is freedom. Love is unconditional. Love is a growth. Love is a creator. Love is a life. Love is a source. But what love is not is I want you to tell me this. I want you to do this. I want this relationship to be exactly like that. I want you to love me this way. I want you to say this and I want I don't want your bad parts. And I don't want your your past or I don't want your future or all of these wants and needs. But this is not love. This is condition. This is a contract. This is something we are saying ourselves that I want this, 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 this. I like how nowadays there are some coaches or something like this. I don't know. I, I don't want to like say anything negative in the sense. I don't mean negative with that. But what I mean is like put a list of what do you exactly in a sense of want. Like what type of man do you want? This, 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 this. But then we never write also the bad parts. Like we want all the good parts. But And this brings us to the next, next step actually. That there is no good and bad. And that's what the Twin Flame journey is going to teach us about the non-duality. So from unconditional love, we enter into a non-duality. And what is a non-duality? That everything is the same. Everything happens right now, right here. The good and the bad. And in the universe, there is no no duality, like from our mind. And there is a uh, Indian Hindu, in 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 Indian Sanskrit, the Hindu Sanskrit is um, is talking about Advaita, Advaita teachings, which is a non-duality. And uh, and this is something very important to learn on this journey. Because what Twin Flame Journey is teaching us, that when, when when we talk about it, that it's one of the hardest things you have experienced. Most probably one of the most complicated thing you have gone through and you try to make sense of this with your mind. Yet you can't make the sense of it with your mind 
Because more the co- you connect within your soul, more you connect within you, you start feeling it. And then you can also say that this is the most beautiful, most profound, kindest, and most beautiful love you experienced in your life. And you would never change that. I know that I have always said that those who don't know what is a twin flame journey and how it's going to wreck you apart, I would say I don't wish that to anybody. And at the same time, I would say it's the most beautiful, profound, and amazing journey. Because you're going to feel something so divine, so beautiful, something that makes you, you. And so we can see here already how there is no duality. The twin flame journey happens in a non-duality. The good and the bad is in oneness. It feels very, very hard, but at the same time feels so beautiful and divine. Another day when I was meditating and channeling, I felt that it's so easy. It's so easy. And one of the things that I I always said that this podcast is about you. It's your stories, it's your journeys, it's your energy. And I said it's so easy. It's for so easy for every one of us to say one of the things is, which I don't talk much about it, And I will do a few episodes in the future just to understand of where I am standing on my journey. Because a lot of things have changed, a lot of things have shifted. And uh, and a lot of beautiful things have happened. But it's um, so easy in the sense of putting for you to tell you that, look, I have helped, I don't know. 5,000 people into a union. Look, they are with their partner. Now it's your turn. What I believe in is that when you connect with your soul, when you are shifting your energy, and you can do all that by yourself as well. Sometimes we do need guidance. I totally agree. I had a lot of guides on the way, a lot of teachers, a lot of people who came on the way And they always come. You're never alone. Your guides are always there with you. And they're going to help you to transform into a person you're supposed to become and you're supposed to be. And your twin obviously was the first life coach. That's why I often say that your twin twin flame is your best life coach. Are they the best lover in that sense? Of course, in in a way of divine love, absolutely. But in a relationship, it can be a little bit difficult because they are your best life coach so they if you are not ready to unbreak the potential of who you are and who you're supposed to become and same for them it is going to bring a conflict because we feel like a constant torture we feel like we constantly need to climb that mountain but they are here to show you who you really are and that's why i call the twin flame your best life coach but when it's so easy to get caught up in a moment that, oh, you see, this person said that they are in a union and now everything is fantastic. They are married, they are this, and this person has helped so many. I just want to say that this is the third thing. Twin flame journey continues. Why? Because it's your spiritual awakening. And spiritual awakening continues always. Even when we die, This is the next level of spiritual awakening. Even if we die on here on earth, our energy goes out of the, our soul goes out of the body. And it continues to evolve. It doesn't disappear somewhere. Right now you're having a human experience and take the most of it. Embrace this human experience. Embrace with your broken heart. And I know that when we first come to this journey, it's so overwhelming. Another day when the full moon was here and I did an energy activation on the beach and it was just so beautiful. I love working with energies because seeing it, how it, how it heals, how it transforms, how it brings out everything. And we were driving back and the full moon was enormous. So 
my dear Capricorns who made that beautiful full moon. Thank you. And my mother was next to me and she told me, do you remember when you were back in Switzerland and you, uh, you came back and you said, hey, everybody go outside and see this full moon. And that was right before the Lionsgate. And during that time, I had no idea about the Lionsgate, about the Sirius, about the energies. I had no idea anything of this. I was just in so much in pain that I tried to cope every day. And the full moon was in the sense of, I remember back then, I was like, guide me full moon, help me. Because that was a very, very painful time. Like every time when I flash back to this moment, I ask myself, how am I alive? But then my spirit and soul, and they say, because you gave up eventually. Your ego gave up. You stopped fighting and we were able to help you and guide you. Did you have to make a big change in your life? Yes. Did you have to take a leap of faith? Yes. Did I have to get comfortable of being in the unknown? Yes. But I knew that I have my spirit guides, my souls, me within. And the answers and the union is within. I am not saying that we shouldn't be talking to someone or we shouldn't be connecting with somebody. I find it extremely powerful because when we get to speak our truth, at least this was for me and I'm really talking from my own personal experience and the reason I have the cause today is because the liberation I was able to find from finally saying I have met my twin flame. I don't know how to explain this to anybody, but I have met. And starting to admit this was such a big part of the healing process. It's such an important part. And I know that we will be thinking of um, how can I do this or how can I admit this? I would say that if you are looking into the union, because the union is inside of you, the union is not outside. And this is another misconception, just in my perspective of that journey, that the union happens outside first. No, the union happens inside first. And that's why to say that, let's say, we have helped 10,000 people to get to union, look, they are married, come and buy this course or do this and this and these courses and I don't know which courses and I'm not here to say that anybody is wrong it might work for somebody and I'm extremely happy that it works but what they're missing out from there and I understand it's marketing of course I do that the union has to happen inside of you first inside of you because you are oneness and again it brings us back to their non-duality. I would really highly recommend you to research and look into the non-duality. I will be making more videos in the future to show you how everything happens in oneness, in unity, and there is no separation in life. But in order to get there, we need to start admitting that I am on this journey. That me, I, I, am, I don't know if I'm just blessed, but I am truly blessed with each one of you. Because hearing the stories I had just this week as well, beautiful souls coming to tell me their stories and their energy and their life force. Oh my God. You know, sometimes I just close my eyes and I wish that one day we would all be, all through Twin Flames, we would be in a place and feel that energy because the blessing I have of connecting with all of you and hearing the story I have documented all soon I will put up something on in, uh, on my website that you can fill it up to document this journey I don't believe even for once that this is not real 
And this is another thing. I when I came back from the training, I wrote my book ready. And there I talk a lot about about the reality. I will start giving a little hints in here and there. But another day I, re- I received a message on on my Instagram. And there was somebody says twin flames are not real. And I, and my main answer for this is but tell me what is real. What is reality? And what is real? Already right now, me and you are experiencing a very different reality. It might be a daytime for you or a nighttime for you. It might be that you feel that you have a sunshine, but it might be that you are listening to this episode and it's raining. Might be that you are feeling a lot of anger listening to this. But some can feel a lot of comfort and a lot of love and a lot of connection. So what is a reality? What, how do we define a reality? Aren't we all de- experiencing a different reality? So what is real then? If I haven't experienced hunger, for example, I can say that it doesn't exist. Where is the hunger? I've never been hungry. I don't know what you're talking. But if you have experienced hunger, and you haven't had meal on the table, and you saw your parents were struggling to feed you, then you have experienced, and this is real. So what is a reality? This will you will read a lot about on my book, because that was channeled through from some source, which I had no idea. When I was reading about it afterwards, I was like, who is this person who wrote that? But I know it's not me. It's the channeled energy. And that brings us back to the non-duality and why the non-duality is so important here. Because everything is in oneness. Recognizing that the other is you is an act of love and unity. Hmm? And what did I just say to you? I repeat this. Recognizing that the other is you is an act of love and unity because we are in oneness. And in order to be in oneness and in unity, in union, so-called union, you need to start admitting that you are on this journey. And now somebody can say, well, what if it's a false twin flame or what if I make this up and this up? The time will show you. The time will show you. And if you are lying to yourself because you want to try to put yourself into some box, it will show. It will show and that's okay too. I don't know why we are so afraid that when we have set for some label, which I understand. I went to another day also to bed. And I closed my eyes and I was thinking, and I know that I was just thinking, I was because I meditate quite a lot and I love channeling a lot, as you have heard that from over and over on my podcast. And I was thinking like, okay, but what if this, yeah, let's say the twin flame thing is not real. Let's say it's all, a, it's not real in time, it goes away and all of that and it stops and there is nothing. Of course, when I do that, then be ready that your twin is in your dreams, in your everyday life, as strong as possible. So that's why I'm trying not to do that. But just because I was preparing for that episode, I was channeling some information. And it was funny what was coming, obviously, it was in the sense of um, like the soul is telling. All right, let's say it was a false twin flame. Or let's say it wasn't real. But don't you see how much you have grown? Don't you see of what has happened to you since then? So how it's not real? So that's why actually I know I even have videos of real twin flames and false twin flames and all of that. But I'm getting more and more into the state of realizing It's not about that label. 
And I don't like that label. I never like. I, I love one of the label I really, really love on this journey, if we put it, is quantum couple. Because quantum physics is happening right now. We have seen quantum tests taken even in Geneva, where they were doing, they were putting the, the items into the other side. I, I think I've talked about it on my podcast. And they were rotating the same way and they were doing and even Einstein was saying or it, like it was because it's been a long time when they've been trying to understand the quantum physics, the quantum couple and the, not the quantum couple, but the quantum energy. And I, I believe in this. And so for me, it's like the moment we start letting go of it, am I or am I not or am I fitting into this box or I'm not fitting into this box? You're opening up the journey, the journey within, because there are so many things you're going to discover about yourself. Again, I'm not saying here, because it might look like when I talk like this, that you are not going to be with your twin and it's a lonely journey. You're going to be alone. No, it's the total opposite. When you get to the oneness and non-duality and the unity within yourself. You become a magnet for every single thing. You will be like, I mean, like a new person. But the more you fight against it, let's say, oh, I might not be on a twin flame. This person needs to confirm me this, this, and this, and this, and this. You're fighting within your inner knowledge. You need to quiet the mind. Because there are steps ahead, and it is a journey. It is a journey, and this journey, and here is another thing I want to say. This journey, twin flame journey, will not end with a marriage and will not end with a, being a couple. It, it continues from there on. If you get married to your twin flame, amazing. Make sure to continue the journey. And that's why so-called 3D separation is there to teach you that you have a bigger mission, bigger love, and it's not something you can break and walk away from. And the non-duality is going to teach us that there is no separation in life. It is only our over-reliance on the mind. Dualistic thinking. So the mind likes to think duality. This is good, this is bad, this is great, this is not great. Uh, if I feel anger, that's bad. If I feel happiness, that's good. But... And that's why your mind seems to see that everything is separate. If you are not with your twin right now, you are separated. But now I would ask another question, are you? Are you separated from one another? How much you are separated from each other? Do you feel the energy? Do you feel the connection? Do you see the synchronicities? Do you receive the messages? Have your twin and those who are in the touch, have your twin said to you something profound about this connection that actually has confirmed? Or have they done something? Like even actually, do you know that fully running away from you, fully running away from you is also a sign that they know? Hmm? Sounds crazy. But... Obviously, I'm not talking when we are in a sense of chasing, in a sense of, uh, you know, aggressively, let's say we are sending, we are in front of their house all the time and we are, this, this is a, this is, this is not twin flames. I am talking of when your twin hasn't said anything for very long, like never actually, and they have run away. They will never pick up the phone, they will never talk to you. Because they are scared of this. And I, I totally respect that. Because it's so scary. Because I would say that if you are not on a twin flame journey. And you have no contact. In the sense of let's say I've met people. I've met tons of people in my life. Whoever is going to reach out to me. Or even myself. Sometimes I write to some people. I say hey you know whatever. How is it going? But. With twin flames it feels like. Like sometimes you feel like, I want to run as far as I can. And I heard that from a lot of divine masculines and myself included. I ran as far as I could. That's why I say, I don't. again, I'm not a big fan of chaser and runner and divine feminine and divine masculine. I'm, uh, because we shift and change during this process. 
and uh, and the non-dual teaching, which is the Advaita concept. I would I would really highly recommend you to look it into this. Invite us to see that we are not separate people, that we are one, and we are not isolated from life or from others. And non-duality is an experience in which there is no separation between subject and an object, the rest of the universe and the God. And once you know how to look into that, it helps you, it makes this journey easier. And this is why I am a big fan, I'm a big, big fan of the energy activation, of the energy overall. I've said that on my previous, I devote my life in a sense for energy, as I can see what it is. And, uh, and this brings me into the next thing is as well that everything fits into the unity. Like I said, everything in this journey, love, hatred, joy, sadness, fear, courage, joy, pain, desperation, acceptance, feeling lonely, feeling happy, feeling in union. Everything is in this bubble. Think of this bubble today. You can head over to, uh, to Patreon to do this workshop today. What fits into your bubble? What fits in there? What fits in your union and unity? Before I talked about it, that when the life coaches say that think of the dream version of your partner or think of the dream possibility. And I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm not saying this at all. But what happens is when we focus on, I want this so-called positive, we miss out that there is so-called, like I am far away from perfect. I'm far away from perfect. I have a lot of negative traits, so-called negative traits. Maybe sometimes I talk too much. Maybe sometimes I'm too direct. Maybe sometimes I don't show enough emotions. So for some people, this can look extremely negative. Or maybe sometimes I take things too easy. I allow them to happen. And for some person who likes to have a control and likes to organize, they feel like, oh my God, how can you do like this? But this is me. This is, this is who I am. And this is another thing that this journey is going to teach you. To fall in love with you of who you really are from the core. From the core. Not the way you look. Not the way you talk. Not the way you behave. Not the way you're trying to. The real version of you. The one that has the positive and negative, which means it's in oneness. I had another day where I heard, overheard again this saying for me that you work too much. It's too much for you. And I looked at the person and I said, I love who I am. I really do. And I love the work. I love, and if you take away this from me, I don't love myself anymore then. This is part of me. This is who I am. And when you accept me as I am, the magic will start to happen. So it's the same, like we need to understand when we make this list that the, the mirror exercise on my, on my Patreon is also similar. We accept positive and negative, but when I say negative, we feel immediately like, this is a bad thing, this is a bad thing. But the life is in oneness. The earth is in oneness with positive and negative. We know that. I am not talking of a negative in that fence. And this is another thing. When let's say we kill people or we hurt people. But why do we do this? Because it started from somewhere. It started from somewhere. And now with our consciousness, this is obviously why I say the journey continues from here. We need to heal and shift and change. 
Because this suffering, what is happening, is not normal. And it's not right now. We've been doing this over and over and over and over again. And sometimes I'm just like, we are evolving in our minds, but we keep on killing each other. Or we keep on smashing each other while we know that the Mother Earth has given enough for all of us to live in harmony. But that's a longer story and that's not for this podcast. And uh, in Greek psychology, actually, Pythagoras has says, do not make your body the tomb of your soul. Pythagoras has said that the soul is enclosed and buried into the body and it's liberated when it's with death, when it's over. And I find the Greek mythology, Greek psychology, uh, very like Greek and Indian and all of these Egyptians. And I have to be right in the middle over here. And I channel a lot of and I, I feel very connected to my Greek sisters, those who are coming to the course. Oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Um, and another this year retreat we had, she was a German girl, but she put the Greek song and I'd never heard of that song, but the moment I heard that song, I just knew everything. The, the, the art of knowing without knowing. You feel it. You just feel it. And that's, again, what the energy work is doing. Um, I've heard from uh, when we were also doing the, at the training, the energy work and everything, and people would come out of it and start speaking Portuguese or things like this. And they're like, I, I don't speak that, but how, how I was doing it. Or you speak like some other language because it's inside of you. And you're going to start channel this through your energy. That's why I love it. Uh, and so this, in a sense of, like I say, we are not separate from one another. You are in oneness. And if you're wondering how to get there, is to go inside. Meditation, breath work, join the 707, uh, oh, sorry, uh, 4th of August. We have a free event where I guide you through to go inside. You might discover something or you might discover nothing, but it's up to you. You can always join. Uh, links are in bio, so it's on Patreon. You can see it more in detail. And, and you're going to discover these answers. And the more you connect, because sometimes the reason today I am so in union, the reason today I'm so in union is because I connect within myself. I take the time to get there. Sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's more beautiful. Sometimes I cry like a baby and I just cry and I allow myself to have that moment. And I'm forever thankful for this journey. And this, remember, this journey continues. Even if you come to union, even if you receive a message now from your twin flame, because like I said, they are going through a very rapid shift and change. 26th of uh, July now starts a lot to happen and you will feel that energetically too until the lion's gate. Please take your time to connect. Please take your time to meditate. Come to the inner journey, energy activation and forth. Free event, but please say yes because it can be maximum, maximum people. Uh, amount of people because I think Zoom will not allow more uh, and then on 8 we have 3 sessions one is sold out one has one ticket left right now when I say that I cannot promise that there is and the other one has 4 tickets left I think and then we are we are sold out for this one if somebody wants to join there are so much in you that you know but sometimes we are confused. And that's why I say, invite your spirit guides. Connect with people who will help you there. Because remember also that every other person in your life is your mirror. Your twin flame is your best mirror. It's like the most clear mirror because it's going to show you exactly who you are. 
and who you're supposed to become. <laughs> Another day I had, um, we had a conversation, I had a conversation with my twin and we were talking about love. Because sometimes I like asking questions, what is his deeper way of understanding things? And he wrote to me, he says, you are forever my impossible love. And I said, why do you use the word impossible? And then he said, just the way you are, just the way we meet, just the way I have felt, you are impossible because it feels unreal. Didn't they say before that twin flames aren't real? Exactly. What is real? What is reality? And maybe they are not real. And maybe they are impossible. But maybe you have an answer, ins answer inside of you that you know who you are. Embrace it. Love it. And be with that. I'm going to put here today's meditation now. So I don't know which place you are in right now and how you are connected right now or what you're doing right now. But try to find a place where you could sit down for a minute or lie down for a minute. And when we begin this meditation, I would like you to ask exactly this question from yourself. Who am I? Or who are we? So sit down or lie down and close your eyes. And take a deep breath in. And exhale slowly through your mouth. Always take time when you exhale. Now take another deep breath in. And exhale through your mouth. Now take another deep breath in and exhale through your mouth. I would like you to continue breathing in your own rhythm. But during the time when you're breathing, ask this question and feel how the light is coming inside of you. Who am I or who are we? And keep breathing as deep as you can and exhale as slow as you can. Take your time on this process. Keep breathing. Take a deep breath in and feel how the light is coming with this deep breath inside of you. And while you breathe in, ask again, who am I or who are we? Breathe in and hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one, and release. 
this slowly. Take another deep breath in. And hold. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take another deep breath in. And hold ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take another deep breath in and hold ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take another deep breath in and hold ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. And now allow the answer to come or to feel. Enjoy.
fingers, touch our toes, or feel our toes, our fingers, and if you felt something that you channel through or something came, feel free to leave this in a comment, feel free to continue, there are more on a Patreon, if you feel like you would like to go deeper, there's a longer one over there, and yes, this was today's episode and I'm very glad that you were here and you were part of it. Just a few to day things to go through. Retreat email went out. All the forums are out there. Please, those of you who said that they would like to come, fill it up now as soon as possible. I see that some of you have missed it and I know it can be holidays and all these kind of things. Take a two minutes to fill it up to make sure that you are on a list because it's in the sense of sold out or there might be one place left if you would like to come please do this right now in a moment event on the 8th of august one is sold out one we have one ticket left and four tickets so if you would like to come again the information is in the uh, bio those of for those of you who would feel like they would like to have a consultation call to discover what is happening to them talking about the journey activating their energy channeling their energy and their twins energy and all of this feel free to book a call with me on twinflameawakeningjourney.com i'm very glad that you were here today and get ready for this portal you are a gift you are a love and thank you for being here lots of love and light Thank you.